This morning, we woke up to an announcement from Blackmagic Design, letting us know that there is a new update to DaVinci Resolve. This has a big list of improvements, but one of them stands out in particular, AI stabilization. The big question here for me is, are Blackmagic just jumping on the hype of AI, or do we truly have something brand new? In this video, we're gonna find out. So this video is something a little different from me, and it's just my initial reactions to Blackmagic announcing AI stabilization. I've not tried it out yet, I know nothing about it. I'm just going to download it right now and we can find out together what it actually means and is. Looking on X or Twitter right here, you can see that Blackmagic label an update as AI stabilization. But where things start to get a little interesting if you come over to the Blackmagic Design website and click uh, the DaVinci Resolve and Fusion software, you can see the update right here, which is DaVinci Resolve 18.6.5. If we click on read more to find out more information about this update, you can see it is no longer labeled as AI stabilization. If we are going off the same order that Blackmagic used in their tweet, it is labeled as gyro stabilization with Blackmagic cinema camera 6K. Now this would be Blackmagic's new full frame 6K cinema camera, which I do own. So the first thing I did is just went right outside my office. I didn't have much time. So I just got some really quick and simple B-roll that we'll get to in a sec, just so I could test it and see what is actually going on. If you've done an update for Resolve before, this one is no different, but if not, you just click your operating system down here. You need to register and then download. Make sure you select studio or free version, matching whichever DaVinci Resolve you are using. Once that's downloaded, it's pretty straightforward. Just press next and keep going through and eventually you will see the installation was successful. What I've done here is I created a new project just to run this test inside of and I've loaded in my test footage from the Cinema Camera 6K. Again, I didn't spend much time capturing this footage. I used manual cine lenses. I used a 25mm and an 85mm. And I did some standing still and some walking. Just off screen here, I have my Windows desktop PC, which is still running the older version, pre-update. And I've loaded this exact same project in there, applied gyro stabilization to all the clips, rendered them out, so we can overlay them and compare side by side, pre-update and then after the update, so we can see if it's actually got any better or doing anything different. So first up, to keep it really simple, I just got a shot here of me trying to hold the camera as still as possible. This has the 25 millimeter lens on it. I tried balancing the rig as much as possible. I had a top handle on it and I was pressing into my body and just trying to keep it as steady as possible. And also all the shots are in 6K open gate Q5, 25 frames per second. So the first thing to note here is under the stabilization tab, there is no difference to me. We still see all the original stabilizations, what you get in Resolve. And because it is detecting that it's a B-roll file from the Cinema Camera 6K, we do see the camera gyro, but this was the same in the previous before the update. If we jump over to the color grading tab, come to the tracker, look under stabilization under here, again, I don't see any different options than what are normally there. And the last place I thought to look was Infusion. If we just search for any stabilization or AI. So unless I'm missing something here, I'm guessing this AI stabilization has been built directly into the camera gyro normal stabilization setting. So if we select camera gyro and hit stabilize, you can see it works quite fast. I would say this is maybe a little bit faster than previous. I am on a base model M3 MacBook Pro here. It looks pretty natural. I mean, it's a really simple clip. I'm not really seeing anything too jumping out at me. Watching them side by side here, we have pre-update and after the update. I think it's the same. Don't know if I'm missing something. Don't know what your guys are seeing. Moving on to the next one. Let's do the exact same again. So here, let's try a walking one. This is what it looks like before, prior to any stabilization again. I was trying to walk as gentle as I could, uh, just holding the camera in my hands. There is no in-body stabilization of anything in this camera. If we then come and hit the gyro stabilization, again, it definitely feels like it is working faster than normal. That's a pretty good result, to be fair. All said and done, to say that it's all done post-production, I think that's really good stabilization. Comparing it to the old gyro stabilization, I'm not really seeing a difference here. Let me know in the comments whether you can tell the difference. Maybe the old one looks better. 
There is more footsteps in the le in the newer version. <laughs> it's so indifferent here. I'm not sure. To me, it looks the same, but let's carry on. So this is on the 85 millimeter lens. So as you can see, it's a lot more shaky. As you probably know, the longer the reach on the lens, the more you're going to pick up vibrations and shakes from the hand on the camera body. So 85 millimeter, we're gonna have a much more shaky shot than at 25 millimeters. Add the gyro stabilization. Something it is not doing is working like a non-gyro stabilization where it would like warp. It's definitely trying to keep it looking as real as possible something else worth noting is i made sure that my 6k cinema camera is fully up to date as well in case it needed any kind of firmware updates this is comparing the shot to before the update both using gyro stabilization this has now got me thinking that when blackmagic are saying ai stabilization i wonder whether the results are the same but it's using an ai process to speed it up originally when gyro data stabilization was added to resolve it was really slow and it used to crash a lot and this seems really fast and stable although it has been getting better in each update also one final test i tried doing a focus pull and really not trying to hold the camera steady so this is 85 mil i'm just holding it by the top handle and my other hand is on a focus wheel and i just want to pull focus to see how the stabilization would react to it moving focus in the shot something that people may be noticing here is the lack of focus breathing on this lens this is my next video, which is the Nisa Athena Prime Lenses. They are quite amazing when it comes to focus breathing. So make sure to hit the subscribe button to not miss that video when it comes out in a couple of days. Hitting the gyro stabilization once again. Again, I feel that it is not trying to like warp or look fake. Before with this, it used to do a thing where it'd like jump in and really kind of warp. And I'm not seeing much of that but maybe it's just the type of shots we've got. And finally, comparing this last shot with the focus pull to being gyro stabilized in pre-update resolve. Right, to conclude, this was just a quick little reaction video to what I thought may be some new type of stabilization. I'm now thinking that it was just Blackmagic's marketing team adding the word AI into something that already exists. Maybe they have added a new faster process to get you that gyro data and process it faster. But from looking at the results here, I'm not seeing any major changes and they look pretty identical to me. There is of course the probability that I'm totally missing some kind of section here, but I have scoured through Resolve and looked in Fusion in the color tab across all the menus at the top and I can't see anything. In the meantime, until we get more information from Blackmagic, if you want to know what it's like to own and operate a Blackmagic cinema camera in the real world, watch this video right here.